this ginormous mama bear and she's angry and overprotective and she starts charging for you. I just I thought I was gonna die. I was like, wow. Well, first of all, I think it's funny that you called them the little nurse. Like I fainted right there in the in the uh, office. <laughs> You know, I've got one better. Let's get a wheelchair. Thanks for joining us. If you're new here, we're so glad to have you. And if you're a return visitor, welcome back. And joining me today is Ashley as always. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great. Before we get into this today, I, I, and by the way, this is going to be a great episode. So I'll please stay tuned to the end because there's some exciting news we're going to share at the end of the program. I uh, wanted to share a little note that I had got from somebody, and I didn't get the permission to use their name, so I'm just going to read the text to you. And it says, thank you. This is much needed. My husband is not a good caregiver. He forgets I even have a TBI, and it's been over five years already. He's not interested in learning, so hopefully watching you might be helpful for us. And we sure do hope it does help you. And if I get their permission, we'll share her her uh, name next time. So Ashley, today we're talking about anxiety and we're at a little bit different categories here because before my TBI, I really didn't suffer with anxiety so much. I got all my issues after that. And then you had yours before, correct? Yes. I was diagnosed with an anxiety disorder prior to my concussion and it kind of changed after my concussion so yeah. do different perspectives right that's what i love about our dynamics here is because ashley has a lot of uh differences that i do but we both bring the same symptoms to the table pretty much so ashley um you did you have a story that you wanted to share with us first before i dive into my long story when I saw my concussion doctor, he forewarned me that one of the triggering things for me would be going back to the grocery store. Um, and when I went to the grocery store for the first time after my um, concussion, the lights, the aisles, all the people, it was very overwhelming. And unfortunately, that is definitely, you know, a result of the uh, concussion because we're taking in all of these, you know, sensory things that didn't bother us prior to the concussion, but during the concussion and after the concussion were definitely a lot more sensitive. So that was the biggest adjustment for me was, um, you know, having to get used to situational anxiety as opposed to the everyday worry type anxiety I had prior to the concussion. And there's so many different things that can trigger the anxiety. And it's not just one thing it could even be as something as simple as a, a even a tiny noise i know for me even when it's quiet and hearing the ticking of a clock that sometimes can trigger anxiety for me who knows why but that just is something that happens people chewing like i know that's like an actual thing that drives people crazy but it didn't bother me until well I shouldn't say it didn't bother me. It always kind of bothered me, but now it's kind of like nails on the chalkboard. So it kind of, it annoyed you before and now it just annoys you. Plus it like, like you said, the nails on the chalkboard, it, the intensity. Yes. Yeah. And plus it's like amplified. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then for me going out to restaurants, if they're um, not very crowded, that that's a, a great, experience for me but when there's right. a lot of people around and the clanging of spoons and glasses mm -hmm. that's a huge trigger for me we didn't do a podcast last week i had to have a tooth pulled and i this just went all together because i got in there and boy did the anxiety go off the charts for me um and basically shout out to the doctor's office because you guys were awesome and i'm almost sure i was talked about after i left because i was not a good patient um so they wheeled me back to the room well they didn't wheel me <laughs> it's like a like i fainted right there in the in the uh, office but i went to the to the uh, room sat down and immediately that 
the heart starts pounding and the heavy breathing and you you feel like you're going to have a heart attack. And I looked down at my watch at one point and I was like, um, one, two, zero, I think is the one twenty. Yeah. Was the rate that it was, it was going at. And I was like, I just, I thought I was going to die. I was like, wow. The uh, dentist comes in and he hands me the little paper to sign and I, <laughs> I grabbed the pen and my hands, my hands given at one of these. <laughs> and he says, you know, he says, just a line will, will do. So it's all he got for me was a line. <laughs> um, but they, they done the area. They left the room thinking they'll come back in a few minutes and Rob will be calm. And guess what? Rob was not calm. Uh, they did get the area numbed, which I, at, I was so high in anxiety. I don't even think they would have had to numb the area. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to put the little block in to keep your mouth open. Right. And the the little nurse or whatever they call them, uh, dental assistant, I think. Dental hygienist. Yeah. So she, she just kept, you know, tapping me on the shoulder. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I'm thinking, it ain't okay. <laughs> I don't know what's come over me. And I've been to the dentist. I can tell you how many times, but, um, you know, God love him. He finally got that tooth out. Uh, the staff took me back, let me sit behind the counter with them. And I actually joked with them and said, do I have to do any work while I'm back here? <laughs> But uh, thankfully, my wife came, she came and picked me up and uh, the nurse says, would you like us to walk downstairs with you? And I said, you know, that'd probably be a great idea. Uh, And then the nurse goes, you know, I've got one better. Let's get a wheelchair. (laughs) Why not? You know, because I've already made a a butt of myself. So why not just wheel me out here? (laughs) But I did explain to the lady in the elevator. I said, you know, I am so sorry for my actions. Mm -hmm. And I explained to her about my brain injury. And she says, you know, she says, my brother also had a brain injury. She said, and he has high levels of anxiety. So she totally understood. So that relieved me a little bit. You know, I don't know if her brother really had a TBI or not. Maybe she was just trying to calm me down. I don't know, but I I can't believe she'd lie about that. But yeah, irregardless, it made me feel better knowing that she wasn't just thinking, Oh, this idiot here can't even go to the dentist, you know? (laughs) So that really relieved me. Well, first of all, I think it's funny that you called them the little nurse. (laughs) The little nurse. (laughs) I don't know where that came from. (laughs) Memory issues. Rewatch our episode two and episode three. But um, (laughs) what I wanted to tell you about that, Rob is, I know exactly why you freaked out at the dentist and had anxiety. Okay. Explain to us. Okay. So essentially you pretty much had a panic attack and basically what happens is your brain thinks there's a threat when there's not actually a threat. Now to make this easier for people to understand, I'm going to tell a little antidote. So imagine you're walking through a forest and you come across this cute little baby bear. Oh, look how cute the baby bear is. Then all of a sudden from behind the tree, you see this ginormous mama bear and she's angry and overprotective and she starts charging for you and you just run the other way, screaming, hoping you're not going to die. Well, basically you think your life's being threatened in that bear situation. So you're hightailing it. Meanwhile, you're running as fast as you can, your heart is racing, you might feel sweaty, might have racing thoughts, you know, increased heartbeat. So essentially, when you were in that dentist chair, your brain was telling you a false message. It was telling you, there is a bear chasing you, you need to run, you need to do whatever you can because your life is in peril. And then that releases all the messages to your body to, you know, increase the heart rate and all those other symptoms you had talked about earlier. So when I find my body reacting like that, when I get anxious, I just remind myself that I'm just having a panic attack. There's not any threat, you know, take some deep breaths and I just basically have to ride it out. That's a great analogy. And I'll tell you something else. I have been seeing a counselor and one of the things that she was telling me about is to help relieve with your stress 
is to imagine a place that is your happy place, basically. You know, you, what is your safe place? And for me, my safe place was the bed <laughs> because that, nobody else can come into that inner sanctuary, you know, because that's mm -hmm. that's my way of blocking out the world. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had to, to imagine a container. Um, and that's where I can put all of my thoughts, all of my uh, worries and fears in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to give that a name. And what did you name it? I forget. <laughs> you named it. I forget. I should, you know what? I should have named it. I forget. And I always keep notes and guess what? I don't have that note, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't remember what I named it, but, um, so basically like if you're in a grocery store and you know, it's getting a little crowded and you're feeling that anxious, you know, popping its hair up, you can just go, you know, put that in your, in your nameless box. <laughs> and, insert uh, name here. Yeah. Insert name here. <laughs> in in post-production, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a big banner at the bottom that says, my box's name was actually blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, um, but you put those thoughts in there and I have found that that helps, but that, Dennis trip that there was no helping me at all. Mm -hmm. And I really don't understand why, because my level of pain tolerance is like super high. Mm -hmm. And the doctors have actually told me to, I have really need to be extremely cautious because I could break an arm or a leg and not even realize that I've broken mm -hmm. something Wow. Okay. because it's that high mm -hmm. because all of my energy and pain is, is, you know, up here at the, the My headaches, brain. you know, yeah, they wrap around and it's, and it's hard for people to fathom mm -hmm. because I hurt around the clock and I have ever since I hit my head and there's no relief. So most of the time, the smile that people see in my face, that's forced. Let me tell you. So you're forcing a smile right now for us. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. I, I mean, you, not funny, but funny. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's, the, I compare it to um, if you lose an arm, you know, you can sit back and cry and say, I've only got one arm. Or you know what you can do? You can say, I've got to find a way to adapt to this. So you just kind of work through the pain until you can't take any more. And that's when I go to my safe sanctuary and just cancel the world. <laughs> okay. Another thing I was taught to help with anxiety is like a grounding exercise. So what are five things you can see four touch three here, two taste one smell or any variation of those five sent and five senses. And then also to like, you know, going through the alphabet, like a through Z and choose a category like colors or animals or places because it reroutes your thoughts from the fight or flight or freeze mode, fight, flight, or freeze mode to the thinking mode. And that will help, you know, get rid of that um, panic. Interesting. Um, I'm going to try that. Now for the exciting announcing news that you're all waiting for in, in a lot of support groups that I've been in, a lot of people are expressing interest to be on the program. So we're going to get started on that. And I don't have my list, but we do have two people coming up that will be on the program. One is very exciting for me. It is anyway, because she's an author, a brain injury survivor, and I don't have her name in front of me. And I am very sorry, but I am going to be buying your book off of Amazon. And when we have a run, I'm going to get the link to that. So you guys can get that too, because she has a really good story to tell and she goes to schools and does public speaking. So I'm just honored that she's agreed to be on our program. So we cannot wait to have her on. So if you want to be on the program, please uh, drop us a line. And the email is. Uh, Life rewired podcast at yahoo.com. Thank you. Or you can also follow us on Twitter. And that will be below as well. Um, what else? Facebook. Facebook. Yes, please. If you want to interact with us, this is a great way to interact with us. It's an open group. You don't have to be requesting to join us. It's just called Life Rewired. 
and you'll see our, our logo up there. But yeah, please join that Facebook. But, and that's a good way for you to get information quickly to us to say, hey, blah, blah, blah. This is what you should do with the program. This is how we like to, to see things go because we're all in this together. We want to, to make this a community of, of survivors that can also be a voice and, and a light to shine to the people that have no idea what we go through on a daily basis. You know, just like the lady that her husband uh, that was for five years. Yeah, he just doesn't understand. So she's hopeful that this will be a way for them to understand. Right. And so, yeah, just if you would just hit the like button and subscribe to the channel that helps us out, that helps us to be more visible in the YouTube community. And that helps you to push the video out to more people. So if you just do that for us, we don't need money. We don't need anything else, but just that, that quick click, two clicks, like subscribe. That's all you got to do. I hope everybody has a great weekend and I'm sorry if you could hear the cat meowing in the background. <laughs> He wanted to be a special guest on the program too. She always yeah. wants to be a special guest in everything <laughs> that involves a computer because it takes my attention from her. So <laughs> we'll have to have a special episode with just the our cats. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Thanks for joining us. We will see you guys next week.